You all know me as a cosplayer, but I'm also a scientist, and this is the story of how I combine cosplay and science to create an oyster dress. More specifically, I was tasked with creating a cosplay that represented an oyster restoration. In this video, we are literally throwing a GoPro camera into the water in order to monitor the oyster reef health. This is because oyster populations have declined due to things like over harvesting and pollution. So we're able to see a reef go from no oysters to many. And that is exactly what I'm showing in my dress. First, I have to get my oyster shells and no, I'm not getting them from the ocean. Instead, I actually had to go behind a shed and get some oysters that are left over from science experiments. They were very dirty from being left out in the mud, so I had to scrub them a lot with a toothbrush to clean them. And once they were all clean, I had to start drilling holes in these shells. So what I did was I got the smallest, thinnest shells possible, which made this very difficult because some of them literally broke in my hand. But I did manage to make a hole in a good amount of them, actually about a hundred. Then I also had to do some shaping, some more cleaning up because I really wanted these to look super nice. Once I finished with the holes, I had over a hundred shells. Yes, I did over a hundred. <laughs> I drilled over a hundred little holes in these shells and that was something. But the thing about it is that these shells are very chalky to the touch. So I decided I wanted to polish them. And I used mineral oil, which I just painted on top of all the oyster shells and let it dry. I think they said for like 48 hours, but honestly, I just let them dry for a long time. And then I moved on to the sewing. <laughs> so this is my second dress ever. I am no way an expert at making dresses, but I started with the tool. I wanted to layer it over another fabric. And I have made a mock-up based off of a corset I made before. This is going to be my first time making a bodice with boob cups and I struggled a lot. <laughs> Once I cut the pattern out of both fabrics, I basted them together because they're super slippery and moving around a lot and I wanted them to act as one fabric. This made things a whole lot easier once I started to sew the bodice together, which was the easy part. <laughs> Now we are going to work on the back of the corset. So we're going to take something called an awl and we're going to make holes for our eyelets. And trust me, you're going to want to use an actual tool for this because I use a broken crochet hook and it didn't work that well. So definitely use an awl. This basically punctures your fabric, which will make it more sturdy as we hand sew the eyelets into the bodice. And then we are going to add boning just to give the bodice a bit more stiffness. As you can see here, I'm doing some pretty nice finishings for the inside of my bodice. You're also probably noticing that the inside of the bodice is shiny instead of the outside. But I did this on purpose because I was thinking of how an oyster is. On the inside is very shiny while the outside is more muted. Let's take a moment to appreciate how clean this is. This was my first time trying Stitch in the Ditch. And now we get to the hardest part of this dress, the boob cups. I was having so much issues with this. The videos here don't even cover it because I didn't have the right size boob cups and then I was trying to do without the boob cups and then I didn't know what I was doing. So I just relied on hand stitching because honestly, that's one of my highest skills. And somehow I managed to make it work. I'm not going to lie. One side was looking kind of whack. So I just switched it and put the oysters on that side. That is looking good. And now I get to go to my happy place and start hand sewing. So I had to hand sew every individual oyster shell bead onto the bodice. I always say stuff takes a long time so y'all already know. Also if you can see there's little pearls that are peeking out. I wanted to add that as you know just a hint of sparkle. You know oysters have pearls inside of them. And I also added little gathered pieces of tool all over the dress. Anyways now we begin on the skirt which <laughs> I don't like making skirts. It's just so much of sewing in a straight 
line like i literally stopped caring but i gotta say the hem was pretty freaking clean the thing is i didn't really calculate how much fabric i needed for this so the skirt wasn't long enough i did some quick thinking and made a huge ruffle to go along the bottom of the skirt so that it would be long enough <laughs> I did a lap zipper in the back. It came out kind of weird, but that's fine because I'm about to cover it with some tool. It was around this time I realized I did not have enough time to make an underskirt. And I was in desperate need of one because I needed the dress to be just a little bit more floofy. So I ordered one off Amazon. <laughs> so here is me finally looking at the skirt and the bodice together. I had to make sure everything lined up so that I could have the oyster shells seamlessly flow from the bodice to the dress. I also did add a layer of tulle because just something was missing on the skirt. I also made a lot of gathered pieces of tulle to put on the skirt. And here's me sewing on oyster shells, sewing on tulle. This was more challenging than the bodice because it's just a large amount of space. And I wanted to look kind of organic and random, which I did take a look at myself wearing this dress and I wasn't feeling it. Something was off. So I just started to rip the tulle. And this gave it a really nice organic effect. I was really nervous because once I did this, there was no going back, but it ended up working out perfectly. Last minute, I decided that I was going to make some jewelry to match the outfit just so I could style it for the con. I will both wear this dress and display it. And we're gonna go through both because they're going to both be in very different settings. Like I said, this is for cosplay and it's for science. But first, let's go to the convention. It was truly magical seeing this dress come together. The experience at the con was crazy. So many people stopped me outside asking if I was a model, going to prom, just wanted to know about this dress. Oh, and there's this wholesome moment where these people came to hype me up and then she walked into a pole. <laughs> Anyways, I did get my costume judged, just, you know, gotta give the full run through of the con. And I walked on stage, explained why I made this dress. And after I got off stage, I was completely overwhelmed with the amount of people that came up to me and told me how much the message of oyster restoration and paying more attention to the environment around us meant to them. Someone was even brought to tears because my dress reminded them of good memories of collecting oysters with a loved one that had passed away. That's when I kind of knew I was doing something right. Combining my love of science and cosplay was really speaking to people and the cosplay even won an award. There's so much more I could say. I wish I could show all the people and record all their messages. But a few days later, I had to bring the dress to a science event. So displaying a cosplay is very different than uh, wearing it. <laughs> you know, I made the cosplay to my measurements and not necessarily a mannequin's measurements. And most pre-bought mannequins do not match my measurements or probably most other people's measurements. So I had to do a lot of not only wear and tear from the con fix up but i had to like do a lot of pinning and cinching and hand sewing just to get the dress to fit on the mannequin correctly this is the second time i've ever had one of my cosplays displayed the first was my jolene at costume college last year this was definitely a bit more scary because it was a big reveal party for this dress and also my sending off party. This is the first cosplay I've made that I will never, well, let's not say never, but it doesn't belong to me. And I'm both happy and sad, but before I knew it, I was ready for the reveal and <laughs> here's me revealing the dress. And I hope that I can combine science and cosplay a lot more in the future.